Well, the Cassini mission occupied half of my career, in fact. Uh, I first started working on a mission to go to Saturn with a lander to go to the moon of Saturn called Titan uh, in the early 1980s, long ago. I never thought it would take as long as it did. And of course, it is probably the most wonderful thing that ever happened in my life. This was a major mission from the Earth to Saturn, a robotic mission with a lander to go to Titan. When we began in Europe, the idea of uh, being deeply involved with planetary exploration was somewhat foreign. By the end, I think the Cassini mission and what followed uh, have left Europe very firmly doing planetary science. There isn't any doubt in anyone's minds. But the other important thing about Cassini is the fact it was an international cooperation. It started off, as you may deduce from the dates, during the Cold War. And so it was a cooperation between the United States and Europe, through the European Space Agency. However, during the gestation of the mission, and as the mission progressed, the Cold War ended. And so by the end of the mission, it was a world mission with involvement from all over Eastern Europe, as well as Western Europe over the United States and elsewhere in the world. For me, it's a model of international cooperation. For me, outer space belongs to everybody. So I don't really care about politics. And so Cassini, as far as I'm concerned, did an enormous amount to bring scientists together. Of course, it also was a political challenge because Europe was not really deeply involved in planetary exploration in 1982. And as a European scientist, the first thing was to establish with the Americans a level of trust. And the second thing was to establish how we would get the money from our European research masters. We knew that we had to do something very important. We, we could not just come along and say we're helping out the Americans. We had to say this is a true partnership. And to be honest, the obvious thing was the landing on Titan. Titan is the largest moon of Saturn. It's the largest moon in the solar system. It's an incredible place because it has an atmosphere, an atmosphere made of very similar things to what we have on Earth. Nitrogen is the primary constituent. If you think about Earth, it's the same. What it lacks is oxygen, but it has a lot of chemicals that are compounds of carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. And some of those contain oxygen. But inside Titan, in the body of the moon is a large amount of oxygen. So it immediately was an interesting place. No other moon has an atmosphere. This atmosphere is a little like the atmosphere of the Earth at the beginning of the solar system. So as well as a trip to the outer solar system, this was in a sense a trip back in time to probably what our atmosphere might have looked at, looked like at Earth, perhaps a billion years after the Earth was born, three and a half billion years ago, in other words. So we realized we could sell the idea of Europe being responsible for visiting Titan. Of course, our American colleagues said, well, no, no, <laughs> this is so important, we, we have to do it. But of course, um, we said, look, 
we need to demonstrate this is frontier science that we in Europe are doing. It's going to cost us a lot of money. We have to have your trust. And indeed, they agreed that um, we could do it. Well, in the end, we managed to persuade both the European Space Agency and, the, and NASA, the American Space Agency, to come together, 1989, and approve the mission. So it took us seven years to get that far. We then had selection of instruments, and uh, I built an instrument for the mothership for the American Cassini spacecraft. And uh, we started in Europe also building the Huygens lander. We finally launched in, 2000, uh, in 1997, so that's another eight years, 15 years since we started. And then, of course, it took seven years to get to Saturn. Getting to Saturn, we did science on the way, but the big excitement was on June the 30th, 2004, insertion into orbit around Saturn. And then, just over six months later, we, Huygens, left the mothership and went down onto the surface of Titan successfully. That was a magical thing. It was, a, for me, something. By then, I was uh, the director at the European Space Agency, so in charge of the team doing the landing on Titan. And I can tell you, there was a magical moment when we got our first images and we saw river-like structures on the surface. We'd said, because of the temperature of the surface of Titan, that methane could be solid, liquid and gase gaseous, and there would be a meteorology, rain based on methane, snow based on methane. And of course, in our own planet, water does that. That drives our meteorology. It's sort of place you can store energy in the meteorological system. Seeing the river structures, I thought, thank you very much. It's exactly what we said we'd see. But of course, you never believe you've seen it until you've seen it. <laughs> you know, we believed it should be like that, but there it was. Of course, in a way, that was really only the beginning. And indeed, Huygens operated for uh, several hours down on the surface and then eventually the cold, it's a very extremely cold on the surface of Titan, it faded away. But um, the mothership, of course, went on orbiting Cassini, went on orbiting Saturn, and Saturn itself is like a solar system all of its own. It's got I 60 four moons, I think. I mean, it's hard to keep up with the number. It's got these magnificent rings. It's the most beautiful thing you can see in the sky, as far as I'm concerned. And then, magically, the instrument that I built, the magnetometer, discovered strange signals coming from a moon just outside the rings of Saturn called Enceladus. There are geysers on Enceladus. The interior of Enceladus appears to contain an ocean and it's heated and water vapor comes out, liquid turning into gas comes out of the surface. It's extraordinary to me. That was, the, I mean, totally, totally unforeseen. It's a place where in the interior of this moon you could, even now, have some form of life present. And yet we discovered it first with a magnetometer, just from the electromagnetic signal of the geysers. I don't know, as far as I'm concerned, my whole career was worth just for those two moments, the landing on Titan and the discoveries at Enceladus. So how does the Cassini mission, how do I justify it to human beings who spend this money? 
Well, it's because we're human beings. It's because, really, we don't understand our own planet. We could spend all our time studying our own planet, but we have eight other examples. <laughs> Understanding them is critical. And in particular, Saturn in particular, because it is almost a solar system in itself, and it has the rings that could be the origin of a planet or the origin of a moon or could be the end of life of a moon. That's something we've been trying to work out. Frankly, I like the Earth. I think living on the Earth is very important. On the other hand, sometime in the future, the Sun will become a red giant and swallow our Earth. Now, maybe there won't be a human race then, but there will be some kind of successors to us. They have to find places where they can lead a sustainable life. Titan is one place, maybe Enceladus. Who knows when the sun is a red giant? The Earth will not be habitable. However much we evolve into different beings, nobody will survive on an Earth that has been swallowed by a red giant star. The temperature in the Saturnian system will be much closer to the temperature at the Earth right now, which sustains life. So if you really want a grandiose answer to the question, why do we do it? We do it for posterity and for whatever ultimately in the millions of years to come, succeeds human life on this planet.